Hey guys, my what a difference a day makes in Salvage. Salvage, Texas, that is. Why some of us just can't wait to play. Who would that be? Aha, that would be you. That's Rocky, and Rocky wants to chase. Now, if you put this down, you go ahead and throw this. Where would we throw this to? Let's see. How about that, Rocky? Yes. Down he goes. Salvage Texas. So, I just wanted to get back on again. You can see me at this point. You can see him. We'll take a little quick walk. So much prettier. Sun is shining. Grass is growing. That's uh, sorghum. And as the other ones have died off, I got all the food up there. The new ones are coming in at the bottom already. And that little teeny bit of snow, eh, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. Look at all this. Green everywhere. It's a beautiful thing. Green grass. So, I didn't realize, I had no idea. I thought sorghum got cut down, got to replant, do all this stuff. It turns out if it keeps in good shape, it'll actually keep growing itself. Wow. So I wasn't a farm boy. So this is all new to me. All right, I'll get, no, let it go, okay. Here we go, you ready? So, there it goes. Woohoo! So imagine, if you can, that rock over there is about 35 foot across and has a cave under it and water for a pond and off in the distance, another pond. Well, all that's imagination. What does that mean? Ah, well, that means somebody had a little bit of imagination and decided to do something. Oh, off in the trees, what do we see? Is the ship of salvage dreams. We'll see it again. So the point of this little thing today, why would I bring you all back to spend your time looking at a screen instead of out enjoying a beautiful day watching plants grow? <laughs> if you can't go to work, what are we doing? We're in a sad state of affairs. It's kind of a tricky thing. How do you get out of it? Did I just see, believe it or not, Government Cuomo has decided that we can take the masks off and open up businesses in New York again. Isn't that fascinating? And as I look and see the people being picked that could potentially run the country again, I see the same old faces. Even John Kerry of my generation, the anti-Vietnam War guy that helped kill more people than any other peacenik of our time. Well, I'm not sure how it's going to come out that that could happen. Hey, Ron, how you doing? I get to actually see some people. Yeah, I do, actually. If you know anything about, see that boat over there is supposed to be in some water right now. But that, that's different. Yeah, this was my project. At 64 years old, I decided I needed to go ahead and do something special. And I wanted to go ahead and have some caves, just in case there's a lot of hail and lightning and volcanic ash, like you see on the sides of those hills. The white part's volcanic ash. Then there's layers in between, tsunami, stuff like that. Well, I decided I was going to dig me some holes. See that tree? On top of there? That's ground level. Yeah, that's ground level. Yeah. Well, imagination is an amazing thing because most people couldn't imagine it. They told me I couldn't do it. Didn't even bother asking, thank goodness. Because if I had, guess what? They just said, no, you can't do it. So, what you do when you get old and senile, or supposedly, and, or at least, um, let's just say, back to being a child again. Isn't that a cool thing? Yeah, so these are canyons. That's gonna have a tent over the top of it and be able to have a floor in it, all of tile, which I haven't stocked. And this is another canyon. Now, normally when this fills up with rainwater, oh boy, another one. Oh, goody, ha. Ah. 
after the rains I always look for the ones that have been turned into balls I've got some very interesting property in that I went down a long ways depending on who the geologist is yeah you can find all sorts of stuff out here it's actually showing the period when the last solar flare major happened or maybe there was a micro nova or something but man it got fried there's melted rock and there's evidence ample evidence that something happened here before oh i just love these now a lot of these you get inside of there and they'll be sand they might even be hollow and some of them are actually almost like a geo kind of thing and they're um nice little things to find i just love them but I've yet to find any evidence, quite per se, of another civilization that survived the last two burns. Now, I say burns. That means like when you tell, like, this is a clay. And you can kind of tell how these kind of things can form to some degree. But other pro parts of the property, it looks like that yeah, plasma just melted it together. This is going to have, normally you could kayak all the way back here. And this comes back to where the beach is. And there'll be uh, for ceremonies, there'll be a tended area. And you can get in your kayak right there and go all the way out. Way out deep into the pond. That goes up to the top again. We're only a short distance from the interstate highway. As in a few hundred feet. You can hear it if you listen. Quiet. But who wants to? Um... The idea of this, though, is to build up the sound barriers and noise barriers I needed to be able to go ahead and keep the bugs here, the pollinators, night pollinators, day pollinators. If you lose your night pollinators to the lights at a, and the street pole doesn't produce any food in, in, the, in your Walmart parking lot, or in this case, trucker parking lots, man, how do you feed all those critters? How do you feed the birds? How do you feed everything? If everything goes there like the bugs dies because of starvation because I don't see anything growing out of light posts and parking lots and I looked all my life here on the other hand oh I got birds in fact those cliffs will turn to mud swallows again as soon as they come back they're traveling I have no clue where but when they do come back there's gonna be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them over there that rock over there is in about, oh, six foot of water. Coming this direction goes 10, 12 feet deep. And over here, all this, see what boat is? That boat, that's actually supposed to be normally, when the water comes in, that right there, that, that log, that's how you get in the boat. Over there, you walk in. So I would be in chest deep water right now if the rains come again and they haven't so what that means is this is what a rainwater pond would look like and it takes in 235 acres of runoff so what you're looking at is a huge drought going on that can't be seen by most people um, who have no reason to worry about it no cattle nothing to feed no animals no wildlife but it'll come in spurts in texas we'll get big rains and that makes these gorges. The gorges are cut out of the paths I created. There you go, the ship of salvage dreams off in the distance. Yeah, I-10. It's, uh, yeah, we got some bees. I got a couple of them, but uh, we don't take care of them well enough because I don't know how, but I do have them. I took them out of houses we were taken down. The El Campo expedition on YouTube, uh, the Song of Salvage on the YouTube channel, uh, which is done to a Johnny cash rhythm with my poem song of salvage to the words kind of a parody you might say and the uh the action the all of the percussion is uh hammers hitting walls is three women over 49 years old tear down a two-story texas house with five kids under 25 to help and uh, we take it down eight days, do it to music. And what makes that cool is that the percussion for the whole thing is hammers hitting and walls falling. And you get to see the house come back to use again. So, why? 
why did I do all that? So I could be erased and censored. No, it was done so I can inspire others to do this. Now, has that worked? Well, hmm. let's just say there wasn't a big need. Concern. Now, right now, right over there, where that sign is, that's the highway. That's the gas station truck stop that I would be able to see clearly right now. I don't want to, I like the song, I can see clearly. No, I don't want to see clearly into a parking lot with a truck stop. Not to mention a thousand trucks or so that might be leaving and coming every day to take off rum, 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 all the way up through the system. So I needed to do a noise barrier and a sound barrier. So where I'm standing right now, which you'll note, that's ground level. Shall we go? Anybody want to go up there? Yeah. Okay. Ground level means I would have been up here. Uh, assuming I get up there, boy, wouldn't that be nice? A live fall to the bottom. Okay. If I'd have been standing at these trees, normally, historically, that would be my view. Now, that's assuming all oh, that pile dirt wasn't there. And that pile dirt wasn't there. Oh yeah, I do have another thing on toy. That's Big John. Big John. Except, compared to that Saney, if you go on to Darby Goes in Saney, that's when I dig it out. This took two and a half months, by the way. If any of you got something to do, you want to do something cool, and you can find a way to do it, I highly recommend doing something that you can remember for the rest of your life. And, and a few other people might remember it. If they get to see it. We found a bunch of these rocks. I was rock hunting. That doesn't require a permit. I was uh, land sculpting. Earth sculpting. No, no permit required. I'm, I'm an artist. My artwork, this is by the way, uh, this is Lake Nobigon. Lake Nobigon is a freshwater lake. So when that's full, that actually goes all the way up to there. About 20 foot. So you can jump off those cliffs into that. Quite nice. There's a couple other lakes, a couple other ponds. Every foot of shoreline is life. Frogs, birds. Ugh. Man, I'm telling you, so much stuff. When I started, it was pretty much like this. And if you can see it, that is a wonderful web of the thorniest, nastiest, stickiest stuff mixed with mesquite and a bunch of other things and admittedly i did lose sadly some trees on the property and clearing it and, and exposing the soil that was underneath underneath the old volcanic ash speaking of which by the way don't forget today for those of you who aren't paying attention the weather the volcanic ash here some of it's two foot thick sometimes it's six inches thick but it would tell you is it over and over again we got Ben Knight Clay from Volcanoes over here, guys. And I'm in Texas, south of Austin. I'm east of San Antonio. A good wise, a good ways west of Houston. In fact, the last exit that did not flood. All the way to Houston. Is that ready? Okay, no. So, okay, we're going to throw this. Ooh, oh, shucks, that's cold. You see how low that water is? Yeehaw! This dog adopted me about a year and a half ago. I never would have thought I'd have a pit bull in my life. It's called a blue nose. And I had no idea. He came to my door with a big old collar on him. And looked like somebody had been not treating him very well. And looked up at me and said, help. And so, I took him in. And about that time, two weeks later, my other pug, my baby... Most of you know me from a long time ago, that was Fable. She passed away. Unexpectedly, just died. And he showed up. Well, it turned out, I found out through others that showed up here, rescue people and police, his fangs been filed off. And I asked, why? Why has his fangs been filed off top and bottom? And they said, well, it's because he was too docile and he wouldn't fight back, so they're going to feed him to the pit bulls for, for fighting. 
my baby. <laughs> not, not, not gonna happen. So, guess what? He stayed. Watch this. Holy cow. All this terrain here, I could put beans out from Dollar General and have bean plants growing. I can have all the water. All this water from here then can seep through this wall and come out the other side and create another whole pond of purified water. But also, I can grow things in both these areas. All the shoreline, all the birds, all the pollinators. We got bees. Yes, we do. Natural and otherwise. I got two hives I brought over that took to being natural. One that we service. I'm supposed to service. Out of houses I was tearing down years ago. Oh, you're going to love this view. That's a cave over there. I'll put a face on it and make it where you can stay at that. Oops. Okay. I forget we're backwards on the lens from what I see. So, the idea behind having holes in the ground in Texas, if you have a hole in the ground in Texas, it's not taxable as a house, although it has to be 55 to 65 degrees year-round. And um, if it's under 400 square foot and it's above the ground, it can be a portable building, which means not taxable as a house. <clears throat> Why is that important? Well, a house, they'll tax you for 200, 300 square foot. Portable building can't support those kind of prices. They can't tax you like that. And you can actually pick it up and move it. And it depreciates in 10 years instead of 29 years, like real estate, where you have to recapture it when you sell it. But if you don't sell it, you just hand it off to a relative. It's just a depreciated piece of trash. No tax ramifications. So a tiny house, if done properly, not on wheels and disposable and makes you sick and you die, but done properly where you can take and transport it down the road and set it up. And if you ever need to move it, get a trailer and move the darn thing like they did in the 1800s. You don't need to park a wagon underneath every house. Every house does not have to be a wagon. But if you can transport your house on a wagon when you need to, that's a good thing. So that's what I tried to teach people. And instead they got caught up in the tiny houses on wheels thing. Great. Except, why well, put $7,000 into a trailer that's going to have tires riding out needing service, required to be licensed, insured, and other such things. And if it's over 10 years, you can't park it in an RV park. Why would you do that? I don't understand. Hey, you feel like I'm on a drone? In case you're wondering, I am not a drone. All right, now, all right, here we go. Ready? Go! Woo! There he goes. Yeah, I mean, he's gone. So, how does this happen when an old guy wants a cripple? Just a poor boy. How do you do that? Oh, by this is baby doll. She's following too, huh? Well, you use your imagination. Ah, the ship of salvage dreams. Over and over again, you see it. But how good is your perspicuity? How cute is your perception? Right over there, I could stand here, and that would be my view before. That beautiful giant truck stop. Great for somebody, the truck stop. If they wanted me as a customer, I would have been a great customer because I would have been able to see them. But I don't want to see them. So instead, we have water, we have canyons, so we can grow plants in. Oh my goodness, I got it. Oh, Roxy, just watch my video. Ah, good, great. Thank you guys. Oh, you can hear the noise. Yeah, I get up on the top. It's crazy. Crazy. Yeah, you know what? They don't seem to have a permit required for land sculpting. Uh, they had a whole bunch of permits required for a lot of things I wanted to do. And you had to keep asking questions. And oh, no. Oh. Okay, I'm going to be a land sculptor. Guess what? I mean, what in Texas, you don't have to have an architect degree to create houses, design them, build them, and sell them up to a thousand square feet. I, who wants a house over a thousand square feet? Anyway, if you can tax them at 400 square foot, make a bunch of tiny houses. You don't have to be an electrician to wire it. You don't have to be a plumber to plumb it. Now, I look like I'm standing in a canyon. And I am. This is a canyon where you can actually grow. We had watermelons growing down here and all these things growing down here. And I didn't have to water them. 
And the reason I didn't have to is, well, let's just say I'm, uh, here we go, right there, watch. Watch what happens. I hate to hold you all up, but if you want to see how you can change your land, look at this. We're walking in what looks like a canyon, and it is. It's kind of natural. It will look natural. Everything's growing up really good. But as you get over here, again, what was here before, all viney shit, uh, porcupine, anything. It was here. But now, look over here now. Okay. This is Ghost Rider Pond. It's about 15 to 18 foot deep. Overflow when it rains through this little canyon. Uh, which I need to dig out again. <laughs> Good exercise. Up oh, and speak of exercise, there's my boy. Okay, so this has water passed through it and out the other side. And I need to dig that out so it doesn't get too high. But again, great exercise. Now you can see again where my noise barrier and my light barrier stop. What an annoyance that would be if you lived over here. But instead now, I have entire areas, like on this ridge right over here. That's actually designed to have a house and a roof line on it with an earthen barrier and water flowing. Isn't that beautiful? Waterfalls over here, watermelon grow easy. And we actually have uh, melons. We're in a good area. We can grow all sorts of things normally. Now the weather change. Hey, let's get to the weather, guys. The heaviest... Hardest, worst weather in our lifetimes is about to happen. Now, I'm not a weatherman. I'm just telling you what you can see. You're now getting beautiful clouds. The highest atmospheric pressure and the lowest atmospheric pressures ever experienced on the planet. Are happening right now and the crazy part is that was before we just got hit by a plasma stream um unpredicted by all the normal things science and it just slammed us so we're now in a geomagnetic storm of sorts but the impact of these two things is it moves across country and throws 27 30 foot waves 40 foot waves up on the california coast Dropped seven feet of snow in Alaska, Canada, and causes an impact on the land with the atmospheric pressure going from the lowest to the highest. Two fronts coming across. Things are changing, people. Now, a lot of you aren't surprised. For some, this is no surprise whatsoever. Are you prepared? I hope. A couple weeks worth at least. I hope. Food? I'm not selling anybody's food, but get some. Wish I was. Maybe I'd be getting some, some samples. But I'm not doing this for anybody's money. I never have. Incidentally, for those who don't know anything about my sites, I had a pure salvage out on a living site that got erased off the internet. I used to offer all the plans and everything and videos on how to do this, how to build. Um, I don't get a chance to do that anymore. It's not worth it for the few people to get to see my stuff. I don't have the time. Too many other things happening. So I just want to tell you when I do get the time that we got to do something. Otherwise, who's going to teach kids? Who's left? What I mean by who's left? If things get hard and you were to have to go ahead and get your own food, raise your own chickens, grow your own stuff, where would you go? What would you do? How would you do that? If you had to stay in your big old house but you couldn't heat it or cool it, if it had no running water, what good is a condo on the 60th floor? So these become issues that have to be addressed soon. And by soon, I mean... Well, for some, very, very soon. My condolences, my prayers, 
all I can do is say over and over again. I'm not the only one warning everybody. This is not unpredicted. This is not something that hasn't been out there for everybody to understand. If we create microcosms, environments, friendly to growing things, friendly to building things out of salvage without imports, local elders teaching local younger people how to use life skills to create food, to create housing out of obsolete structures, barns, buildings, anything we can get our hands on. I tell people all the time, lumber went up 500% this year. How'd your gold and silver do? Build me a house. If you take your gold and silver now, go out and buy some 2 by 4 So they're 250 now they're 850 What do you, So what good is your gold? So you can afford a 2 by 4 that was 250 What's your gold worth? When you go and buy a 2 by 4 the truth is it lost its value. Why? Because lumber went up more than gold. If lumber goes up 25% and gold, I mean, lumber goes up, yeah. And gold goes up 25%, great. You kept up with lumber, you can build houses. But if gold goes up, $200. And lumber goes up to $1,200 from $250. Or $1,000, which it has already. And the impact to you is instead of $200, $2.50 for a stud, you're spending now $8.50 per stud. And is a stud required every 16 inches? So a 10-foot wall is going to use it 14 studs, and all of a sudden your wall got real expensive. And you can deal with salvage lumber, except they outlawed that. The big industry, the big corporations, uh, global, international code is the preferred way of describing it. Defines what you can do, how you can build, what you got to use. And salvage lumber is explicitly not usable for a structural Unless you find an engineer who's willing to go ahead and stamp it, embed his insurance in his career that you don't have a problem with worms, bugs, whatever the problem that might be that somebody's going to want to blame him on that no insurance company is going to help him out with. I'm studying the water flow and everything because each time we have a rain, this for example, I built this dam. And then it's done, I'll have six to eight foot of measurable water height difference. And then I can use that pipe there or otherwise and have the water feed at the bottom if I want to and tap the power. If I tap the power by the water going through it at eight pounds per gallon and it drops four feet, I get 48 pounds of work out of every gallon that moves through that corridor. If I can capture that kind of power and then use the wind to move in an aqueduct from down below back up, millions of gallons become the best storage battery in the world. No lithium, no. I got life on shoreline, my consequence, my product of my work, and I'm remediating soil that otherwise was no good. So this is um, an opportunity to go ahead and, and you just study what is permaculture, but also what is it to go ahead and, and put cattails in and all the plants that'll remediate the soils if they've been abused in the past. And abuse can be anything from over fertilized to having industry, um, having abused it, neglected it, to just being stripped for cattle, for, for which, I mean, I like, I'm not I'm against beef and good beef and organic beef particularly, but, but to just to denude property and to totally just rake all the roots out of it and pesticides and anything else you can out of it, just to go ahead and make it good for cows. I don't agree with that. No, no, I don't agree with that. This is, uh, isn't so much nicer than the other day when it was raining on me and sleeting on me. But it's another story. So the story part of this again is we just had major earthquakes. We've got volcanoes going off. The earthquakes over in Russia just happened. Mongolia. 6.8, and that's the downgraded version. And two more fives simultaneously almost behind that. So that is in a volcanic field that has a... The field is bigger than half the United States. You understand so suppose that little puff of stuff goes up in the air and plugs it up and the sun doesn't get down there you think this is cold you think human beings have the ability to fart that kind of stuff up in the air you're crazy no this has been predicted we know this is going to happen you are experiencing 
the transition in weather that comes along when the sun throws out a this is just a rope of plasma that's smacking us upside the head okay when it does that it puts a lot of pressure on the planet surface planet it goes flexes when it flexes all that magma underneath it goes flexes and it comes out of holes called volcanoes so Mount Etna, Hawaii, and all these guys, well, we're going to pop, go, and glow. And if you're lucky, you don't have to live downstream and suffer from all the magma and possibly the ash and all that. Now, look at this beautiful sky. We have beautiful skies in Texas. I savor every one these days. We're back in my place, surrounded by pastures. Once upon a time, there were trees. Once upon a time, this was the edge of a large area. And right around me is the San Marcos River. And way down over there is the Guadalupe River. And they all lead out to the Gulf of Mexico. We're on the last exit that did not flood all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. That ship you saw, that's the highest point from here to the Gulf of Mexico. On this side of the highway. And on the other side, I do believe normally you can see Iron Mountain. Which I, without the degrees to support my position... But I've been up there and analyzed it and looked at it in that iron clay when you hit it with a strong enough plasma bolt because the magnetosphere has collapsed to the point that the lightning bolts are literally minutes and minutes long and very, very big. And you boil the iron right out of the iron in the clay and you make a mound 600 feet high. Well, when that happens, the plasma, the fingers come all the way out here and meld together layers of clay into rock, crystalline granite type rock. Amazing, which I found. That says giant rocks you saw. So something happened a long time ago and it was pretty dramatic. And now we're going into the same period where the magnetosphere is collapsing. We know this atmosphere is getting closer. And as it gets closer, those giant positive charges in the clouds that are releasing into the earth, which is negative, and unbonding all that water. And where does water come from? Well, that's another story, isn't it? Plasma hits the upper atmosphere. And everything that was oxygen and hydrogen can mix back up again and make H2O. Star water because it's being charged with hydrogen ions and all sorts of things that come from our sun. Yes. Not humans, but our sun. Now, as this all happens, I want to give you all a fair good night. It's getting dark. I'm leaving my little home. I brought that in from India. That's Teak. Ship of Salvage Dreams. Please, now's the time to consider salvaging your dreams. Think about what's important to you. Your family, your loved ones, how you would support them if you didn't have a job. And, and you know what, there might not be jobs for everybody soon. Don't be afraid, but do get prepared. At least start thinking about it. I'm not selling you food. I'm not selling you nothing. When you get done with this, there's no place you can go and buy anything. But consequently, I don't have anybody to help, so I'm not offering anything. Speak up. We do have the B&B for you to come out here and stay if you want to come out and be in the Ark or to stay in one of the places that you can find on Airbnb and experience it enough to get a taste and go home. And be happy. Oh, look at... I was wondering all the time, what's bending down all my cattails? I was thinking, my goodness, they're always bent over in there. And it's like... Oh. Turns out it's all the birds are nesting in there. It gives them protection at night. Nothing can get to them. And they get bugs and all that stuff. So all the cattails that are helping go ahead and clean up the property. Because this was an industrial waste area. They used to dump a bunch of crap back in here. And I dug it all out. And made a big old mound. And helped start remediating it all. Cleaning it all up. making it 
better before I go. Join me, guys, please, my generation. I'm talking to all of them. I'm also talking to you in the middle. If I can't get the 40 or 50 year olds to join in and help guide the 30 year olds and the 20 year olds who are having children raised by a school that breaks them before they have a chance to learn. A system that uses TV and cell phones with too much radiation on them to be near a child. Debilitating them before they get a chance to get a full run going. I watched vaccines destroy my son years ago before we knew what it was doing it. I watched other parents suffer as they then taught me what happened by their kids being hurt. Autism and stuff like that. We can at least put a check on the vaccines until we know for sure what's going on. People die when you give it to them. They don't necessarily die when you get COVID, like as in hardly any. More people are dying from so many other things. But luckily COVID killed the flu, COVID killed the cold, common cold. All the things that used to kill people two years ago are gone. Oh, excuse me, wait a second. That's right. Governor Cuomo just opened up New York City, by the way. Take off your mask, go back to school, go back to your businesses. The Democrats will be in power soon. So, hey, everything's okay, guys. Oh, shit. And here I was thinking all that was... All right. Right. Please. Don't be fooled. It's not over. But don't give up hope. Don't give up faith. Because if we give up, There's not going to be another chance. Peaceful. Powerful. Our voices. How we behave. Don't let the few bad people out there mess this up for us. It's not Republican or Democrat bullshit. That was just to divide everybody. We need both those parties put down. I, mean, I didn't. I would not have gone for Trump in the world had he been just a Republican. But when he went ahead and started putting the Republicans down... As they start to show their colors. And that's another ball game. Take them all out. Start all over again. We need the Republic of 1776. Not 1933. Incorporated. Signing off on a cold, chilly night. Leading up to a beautiful day. We're going to have 70 degrees here in sunshine. Of course, it's going to get colder again. But in the meantime, it's going to be beautiful. And the birds have a place to play. And so do those who come to stay. Y'all have a good one. Thank you, thank you, all of you. Audrey, Ron, man. Let's make it happen.